the EFF has been agitating that South Africa has a greater access to a greater pool of vaccines, uh, citing access to Chinese and Russian vaccines and asking why aren't South Africans being allowed to have that. And they've been pro uh, protesting at SAPRA in Pretoria, threatening that if they don't make a decision in this regard within the next seven days, they will go and sit out at the CEO's offices, at, at the CEO's home, pardon me, uh, next week, Friday, uh, to continue continue their campaign there. Natasha Piri has been observing the proceedings there and she's standing by for us. Uh, Natasha, so proceedings have pretty much come to an end. It's over to you. Indeed, Nampo, the proceedings uh, have uh, come to an end. Uh, I mean, they started at 10 o'clock and they have now, uh, you know, just come to an end. Like I said, uh, we saw there uh, party leader, EFF uh, leader, Julius Malim, I beg your pardon, just addressing EFF members. We also saw the deputy president of the party reading out uh, the memorandum. And I just, I think the hot topics coming out of that memorandum is that they are calling now for the head of uh, the, the chairperson of SAPRA, Ms. Helen Rees, to actually step down as the chairperson. If not uh, Nompu, then uh, they say that they will intensify their efforts and their struggle, so to speak, in their words. They're also demanding um, the, other, the use and the approval of uh, various other vaccines uh, like your Sputnik and uh, like uh, other vaccines from China. But I'm actually joined by other members of another political party which came to join the EFF today and mainly the African Transformation Movement. I'm joined by its chairperson, Mr. Danny Toop. And of course, he'll just tell us about uh, their party pledging solidarity with the EFF. They've also accused President Cyril Ramaphosa's government of mishandling uh, the vaccine rollout and accusing them, uh, Nompu, there of, uh, you know, playing and gambling with the lives of people. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Danny, thank you so much for joining us on SABC News. We heard you speaking to uh, large crowds of EFF members here today. Also, uh, you know, pledging solidarity with the economic freedom fighters. Uh, thank you very much. Um, yes, indeed, we are here uh, as the African Transformation Movement to give our support of, to the EFF as a matter of principle, because uh, we've realized that we are facing one common enemy which is a failed ANC government, um, which takes its interest into account rather than taking those of the people of South Africa. And as a consequence, many people are dying, uh, leaving behind uh, families and so on. We are losing uh, doctors, we are losing uh, professors, we are losing many people uh, as a consequence of the inaction of the ANC government. So we thought it would be proper for us to come here and support the EFF. Are you happy with SAPRA's response? They had said that they will consider the EFF's uh, proposal? We, we, we will wait and hear. We, we can't at the moment express any view until such time that they came back and uh, have given a response to what the demands are. So if no response is given, will we see you in seven days' time again at the capital city? Certainly, depending on what course of action the EFF will take, because we are a peace movement, we would not want to engage ourselves in anything that would be involving violence or so, something of sorts. But certainly anything that is peaceful to make sure that our people get vaccinated, we will certainly support. Mr. Tupa, I, I know, uh, and you know this very well, the EFF uh, has been calling for the amalgamation of uh, the local government elections and uh, the 2024 national elections. Now... We saw the IEC about two weeks ago launching the, the elections. The EFF also criticized that. As the ATM, what is your stand? And I'm speaking about this in light of um, Justice Mustaneka's inquiry on Monday. will now give the floor to political parties to come orally and uh, make their submissions to the inquiry. As the ATM, where do you stand in this matter? And can you confirm or can you tell us if uh, the party will be going to uh, Justice Mustaneka's inquiry on Monday or during next week? Sure, we will be going to Justin Mosonica and make our submission as the ATM. Uh, just to be brief, uh, the ATM is of a view that the elections must go ahead. We can no longer afford having uh, people who are looting uh, state resources the way in which we do and prolong their term of office by extending uh, their term of office to 2024. Because uh, alignment would mean 2024, it would require constitutional amendment. And for that, we are not ready as the ATM. We are saying let the election go ahead. Uh, because many things are going ahead. Uh, things such as your G7 summit and everything has gone ahead. We've seen the by-elections taking place peacefully and without any super spreading 
um, consequences. So we are saying uh, we are going ahead with the elections. In terms of your party selection processes, are you done uh, with uh, you know your branch meetings, your regional meetings? Just talk us through that process. Yes, um, over the recent uh, past, we've held our uh, processes, we've run our processes, and then uh, the process is now with the office of the Secretary General. Lists are submitted from Gauteng, as far as I, I can tell you. Um, and then we are waiting for the SG to ratify and send the approved list to us. We are ready. And you, sir, just briefly before you cross back to Nompo? Yeah, uh, as uh, my colleague is saying here, we're here to support the cause, which we feel is a very good cause. Um, we say political parties uh, should leave everything aside and concentrate on uh, saving the lives of the people. We say uh, down with a lockdown, as we articulated there, uh, instead of lockdown, let us uh, provide enough vaccine uh, for uh, South Africans. Thank you. And just a clarity-seeking question. Uh, you've just said down with the lockdown. The ATM has been somewhat uh, supporting, you know, government and government's efforts, uh, especially around the messaging of COVID-19, encouraging people to stick to the COVID-19 regulations, also encouraging people to adhere to the lockdown restrictions. Now, you as the ATM have showed and pledged your solidarity to the EFF, and the EFF has said that, they, yes, they will adhere to the lockdown, or not the lockdown regulations, but the COVID-19, uh, you know, regulations, but not the lockdown restrictions. We're currently under level three, where outdoor our restrictions are limited to 100 people and there were more than 100 people. Are you not worried about that backlash and what messaging you're sending to the citizens and to the people of South Africa? We say, when, when, when you think of lockdown, uh, as Julius was saying there, that when you go to the mines, when you go to the shopping malls, uh, there's no lockdown. Uh, but when it comes to uh, uh, the gatherings, like your church gathering, that's where the lockdown is, uh, is enforced. So we see that this lockdown is not like uh, consistent. Somewhere it works, somewhere it doesn't work. So what we are saying is, instead of complete lockdown, have a lockdown with a plan. If that plan say we are shutting uh, uh, the country, we, we are on level whatever for five, ten days uh, in preparation for uh, the people of South Africa to get the vaccination, we go for that. Okay. Thank you so much and thank you for your time, sir. Uh, well, Nompu, there you have it uh, from my guests from the African Transformation Movement who are also out here uh, in their numbers, well, smaller numbers, so to speak, uh, supporting the cause of the EFF. Uh, we've heard there from uh, Sarpa saying that they will consider the demands of the EFF. Whether or not they're going to be favorable or, favorable or not, it yet remains to be seen. So as for us, I think we'll have to wait for that seven days to see whether or not they will stage that sit-in outside the home of Helen Reese. And to whether or not, I mean, their demands they have called, they're now also calling for Helen Reese to step down as the chairperson of SAPRA. Will she or will she not? Uh, it's an issue that yet is uh, yet to, to remain to be seen. I beg your pardon for my English day. As for me, Natasha Piri here in Pretoria, it's back to you in studio. Thank you very much, Natasha, for that very succinct report. My colleague there, Natasha Piri.